Hey everyone, we are here in Ely, Nevada for the Bristlecone Bricks and Train Show. There is a lot to do here in Ely, such as the casinos, mountain biking right in the backyard of the city, specialty ice cream shops, as well as treasure hunting, semi-precious gems. But what we're here for is the real working steam train and train show. What better spot to start the video than here at the Mural of Trains? This is a 360 degree video that you can move your phone around or click and drag the video on your computer to look in every direction. We should be able to get a ride on the steam train they have here, so I'm really excited about that coming up, as well as the train show with scale models of the city of Ely and custom builds. Enough blabbering about it though, let's get to that train show. And we are wrapped up on the inside of the building here for the model train show. There was some awesome stuff on the display that you saw here. I'm hoping that you got the opportunity to click around in the video to see everything that they had. And now we are moving on to the outside of the show where you can explore the train yard, the train shed that we'll get to in a minute. And uh, depending on where you're looking at in the video, you might catch me or Lily running across here. A little uh, Easter egg, if you will. So we are making our way to the train shed and going to see all of the awesome full-size locomotives that they have here on display.
We are here with Max in the machine shop, and he has graciously agreed to give us some information about this awesome train here, number 93. Number 93, yep. So this is locomotive number 93. It is one of our three operating speed locomotives here in Nevada Northern. 93 is the biggest locomotive that we have. It is nicknamed the Monster just because of its very large boiler, which is much larger than the one on our other locomotive of a similar wheel type, number 81. This locomotive was built to haul the heavy ore trains of about 30 to 40 cars, and they can do that on its own, no problem, all the way from the mines of Ruth up to the smelter of McGill of a very steep grade. This locomotive could do it all. It's uh, one of our locomotives that was uh, saved by the railroad for preservation purposes and held in reserve service on the freight trains for a short while. Uh, it was then donated to the White Pine Historical Museum, which is across the street from us. And then a couple of years back, we traded a depot along our line again to get this locomotive and our other uh, 280 steam engine number 81 back into service. And 93 has been a workforce at the railroad ever since, uh, and she is definitely my favorite piece of equipment on the railroad. Awesome. Great history there. You said it was about 40 cars? 40 car war trains, no problem at all. This thing, uh, it is a very powerful locomotive. Um, now, steam locomotives are really different than cars or vehicles because they were built for a specific purpose. This locomotive was built to haul heavy trains. It didn't matter how fast it was, it would move them. Okay. You see our other engine number 40, it has very tall driving wheels. That is for speed. That is a passenger engine, so if it goes fast, it can't pull a lot, but it moves. This engine will move anything you put behind it, but it will uh, not go the fastest speeds, but it doesn't move it. Okay. Nice. Yep. Um, very powerful. <laughs> very impressive. Cool. And uh, mentioned going through the caps, we get a insider speak, I guess you could say. Absolutely, yeah, let's head on up. Yeah, let's move on. Okay. So we're up in the cab of the locomotive right now. Uh, where I'm sitting is where the engineer sits. Uh, a bit more complicated than a car. It's got a lot of buttons and a lot of levers and stuff. Uh, so real quick, this right here is your throttle. This is what will control how much steam goes to the wheels, which will make the train move. This right here is the brake for the whole train. This right here is the brake for the locomotive. This right here is everyone's favorite, the whistle. Obviously, there's no steam in the locomotive right now, so I can't blow it, but it is pretty fun. Uh, this right here is what's called the reverser. So this will control how much forward we go back. Now it's backward, we go back, and you'll notice the different notches here. You can actually control how uh, hard the engine's working. So once you get up to speed, if you bring the reverser closer to you, the engine won't be using as much steam to maintain the speed. So it'll work a little less and still move just as fast. One of the very unique innovations that these locomotives will have. It's sort of like shifting gears on a bike. Okay. Definitely some of that the weight and momentum to your advantage. Yep, exactly. Um, and you know, that's something that a lot of people don't really realize. These machines, they're very primitive because everything's done by hand, but there are a lot of really, really interesting inventions and innovations that took place in the steam era. Uh, even with an early locomotive like this that was built in the very early 1900s, uh, there's a lot of really unique stuff here that is really only found in these old machines where you sort of had to be creative to get the job done. Um, looking right in here, this is the firebox. So where the camera's positioned, that's where the fireman would be sitting, but on a locomotive like this, he is not sitting for a very long time. He's going to be shoveling coal into the firebox almost constantly, and especially with an engine as big as this, it is a lot of work. This locomotive runs at 180 pounds of steam pressure. Uh, on average, the locomotive will burn about a ton and a half of coal to two tons of coal on one trip up and down our line. So all the coal is hand shoveled right there. And it is a very monumental task. It's a lot more than just shoveling. You gotta know where the coal needs to go. It's about understanding the locomotive, where it likes to eat coal, and uh, where it burns well. Um, and that is something that can be very difficult for a lot of people to grasp because these engines don't just have a set standard of put coal here, here, and here. <laughs> you run these things with your five senses. Um, and if you don't have a sense of how a locomotive operates, then you're not gonna be able to do it. Uh, there's no operating manual for a steam engine. It's all about feel, it's about knowing the railroad you're on and knowing the locomotive you're on. None of these two things work the same, they all burn differently, they all run differently. So it's about knowing the quirks of every individual machine. Which is why back in the day, a lot of engine crews were assigned specifically to one locomotive and that was the one that they ran with. Hmm. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I mean, I was looking in there a second ago, Yep. and you gotta shovel that like, you got early in there it looks like. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, I'll grab a number six scoop right here. So what you'll do is when you shovel in, you can use this part of the shovel right here and just whack it. 
right against here. And that'll help spray the coal around. There's a lot of different techniques for getting the coal way back there, and it is a trade that takes a lot of practice and a lot of time to learn. But that'll be here pretty soon when I start getting the fire ready on this thing, because we're going to light it off uh, tomorrow morning. And we'll have both of our steam engines running tomorrow, which will be really exciting. Oh, thanks. Okay. Yeah. I'm excited to see it on the line then. Absolutely. So we'll see this one, and uh, I think it was 80, 81? 81, yep. 81's on the line right now, 93 tomorrow. And uh, we'll look forward to uh, hearing that whistle go off and, Absolutely. and see you go right past to the video. There you go, yeah. <laughs> so, thank you again, Max. Of course, no problem. I'm glad to have been able to help. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I was having some audio issues, so this is a voiceover. If you are on the side of the video where you can see me, we do have some of the older passenger cars on the other side of this 360 video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to pitch a tent on that subscribe button. We would love to have you along for all of our adventures. This is going to wrap it up for us here in Ely, Nevada for the Bristlecone Bricks and Train Show. They had some amazing trains on display and we look forward to coming back next year. They have train rides all the time here, so if you're in the area, make sure to check the schedule and find a ride that'll work for you. I'll leave you with a couple shots of the steam trains going by, and we'll catch you on another adventure. See ya.